Hi, everybody. I'm Lynn Petrak, Senior Editor at Progressive Grocer Magazine, and welcome to Top Women in Grocery. It's a podcast focused on the trends, topic, and interests that move women forward at grocery retail. We're shining a light on extraordinary women in the grocery industry who've had a positive uh, career and interesting lives and who are also making a great impact on their workplace and communities. And today I'm talking to an extraordinary woman, Elizabeth Clifton, who I actually met at this year's Top Women in Grocery event in Orlando. Um, I was listening to one of our leadership development program sessions and Elizabeth had a really thought provoking question. So I made a beeline for her like right after the session. Would you like to be on our podcast? <laughs> So that was that was great. So um, she is a 2022 Twig winner in the senior executive category. And a little bit more about Elizabeth. She's vice president of client development for the Albertson Company's account at Vestcom, where she partners with Albertsons to make their shelf life as productive as possible. She's responsible for value creation, discovery, and solution delivery across Albertsons more than 2,200 stores. She manages a direct and a cross-functional team with 20 full-time dedicated Albertsons subject matter experts and over 150 shared resources to execute uh, Albertson's shelf edge with excellence. Among her many achievements, she redefined and set up the Albertson Supergroup, which helps coordinate and rally all members of Vescom that serve Albertsons, regardless of whether or not they're part of the dedicated client development team or functional experts that indirectly support the account, and more on that later. Um, she has over 15 years of experience as a business advisor and thought leader in retail and CPG in the U.S. and internationally. Prior to Vescom, Elizabeth worked as a global consultant for Kearney and developed her foundation in the food industry during her tenure at General Mills. She has an MBA from the University of Minnesota with extensive study in China at the Shanghai Jiao Tong University's Anti School of Economics and Management. Her spirit of collaboration extends to her service work too, which includes volunteering in Argentina with a female-led nonprofit focused on transforming businesses. She recently obtained her foster parent license as a therapeutic foster parent uh, in March 2021. So here we go. Elizabeth, you're passionate about supporting retailers and developing and implementing growth strategies in challenging environments. And one thing our top women in grocery uh, judges this year were impressed with was your creation of that super group to coordinate all company team members that serve this account. So um, why did you start it? And once it was in place, how did it best serve the retail client and you guys? Thanks. Well, first of all, I wanted to say thank you, Lynn, for that wonderful introduction. It's still kind of weird hearing all those things about myself as we go in. <laughs> but I am so thankful that you made a beeline over to me because I am deeply honored not only to have been awarded the Top Women in Grocery Award this year, but also to be speaking with you today. So looking forward to the conversation and let's jump in. Yes, so, let's get right in. Thank you. So you're asking, why did I start the Albertson Supergroup or the ASG, as I like to call it? It's hard to do that without the superhero pose. ASG, the supergroup. <laughs> But why did I start that? So simply put, uh, what is the ASG first? It's it's basically, and you described it very well, it's a cross-functional team. And some of these employees report to me, but many of them don't. And some are even my peers. But I mm -hmm. developed it to ensure that as the account owner for Albertsons, we had a common vision across the client. And so anyone who touches Albertsons was informed of what we were doing, how we were doing it. Uh, what was my vision for the year? How could we really bring the most impact to Albertsons? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and before that, there wasn't really a mechanism to make sure that there was that connective tissue, that everyone mm -hmm. from supply chain to marketing to R&D had a clear and consistent vision across with those goals and priorities. But Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the mm -hmm. other part of that question that you were just asking, keeping track of all parts of that question. Um, yeah, there were a lot. <laughs> there, were, there were. So let me know if I don't answer any of them, but. Uh, sure. I'll do my best on that one. So the second part of that was really around the impact. And so when I first, I'm just going to give you a little bit more context of the impact to the team internally first. And when I first joined Vescom, I had a conversation with my team and with other support members. And I really wanted to listen to try and understand what are their needs? How can I support them? And how as one of the senior leaders, can I help remove barriers and hurdles to them doing their job as effectively as possible and getting the most enjoyment? So I did something kind of like an even better if. And so we did those a lot in consulting is what works well and what would be even better if. And so one of the things that my team mentioned was they wanted to feel connected to the vision. They wanted to feel like it was less siloed. They wanted to feel like they understood the importance of what they did 
to the client every day. So that person who's managing the print sites, how does that really impact the client? How does that impact what I'm doing? That person in, in marketing who's helping develop different designs and creative to bring to the client, how was that used or what did that do or what could they be doing to improve? And so that was really the big part of it. And then really an enabler to recognize like what is the exceptional performance, not only in my direct team, but in those that make the service that we do to Albertsons possible and celebrating wins when they come. So absolutely that's huge. Yeah, that was, I think those are the most important ones. What I did not expect was just how much more morale boosting it was. And mm -hmm. that was, that was the impact that I think I'm most proud of is, is the fact that my team has really come together as a unit in supporting our account. And boy, that sure helps with productivity and results too. When you can, when you can get to that point. It does. It's so strange the way when you're people centric, not only does it help <laughs> with the people and the relationships, but it also helps with the client as well. Absolutely. And on that note, um, can you share an example of how the collaboration worked to either solve a problem or pro provide some new value to, to Albertsons? Definitely. So as I think about examples, the first one that comes to my mind was actually the first problem that we worked to solve together. It's kind of like, okay. as I like to call it, like, my proof of concept. <laughs> and yeah. It was centered on, it was even before I had a name for this Albertson super group. It was just, we're going to bring everyone together and we're going to see how this works out. So mm -hmm. it was centered on reducing silos so that we can be even more efficient and that we can have one voice to the client. Uh, through working together in the free flow of ideas in this one, we found some solutions to things that we used to think were immovable barriers and made us more agile. So I'm going to go into the example. Um, it started for many years. There's been a remote area of Albertsons within one of the divisions that we haven't been able to service. And when I came onto the team, I also did a road show where I went around and met with the different division leads and different client stakeholders to understand what was most important to them. And one of them mentioned at a lunch that they really wished that they could get the same offerings across their entire division uh, and they love them. And so, so what, what can we do? Because there were these remote stores, how could we make that work? And she's like, I know that it hasn't worked in the past. I just want to bring it up again and see if there's something you could do. So I called the first Super group to the rescue. <laughs> right? Group to the rescue. That's exactly it. So called the group. And this is actually when we got the name, the super group. So very <laughs> applicable on that one. But I called everyone into a room together for a working session. And initially there was a lot of hesitation. Many of them had never been in a room together. I actually even got some declined invitation responses where they're like, I think you must have the wrong person. Like I've never <laughs> worked with these people. No one, none of the account leads in the past have ever had a meeting with me. Like, obviously this isn't a meeting for me. So I had to do some work and just explaining to everyone. Yes. Yes. I do intend for you. I need all of these perspectives together. Mm -hmm. So the meeting started. And once it started, people are like, this is going to be a short meeting. We know what it's about. We know it's these remote stores. Uh, you're new. You're new. So let me tell you why we can't do this. Mm -hmm. So I listened, mm -hmm. I took some notes, but then I challenged my group to an exercise and I said, let's, let's imagine a scenario where you've removed all of these constraints. Like imagine a scenario where this is possible and what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And as a team, we started to work backwards to say, how do we get there? And the team just, they came alive and every department shared what they would need and how they would need to make it work. So we started to ask not if this was possible, but how this was possible. And having all of those members in a room together where we were able to bounce ideas off of each other and drive solutions was extremely beneficial. It was a successful initiative that was helpful not only for the client and the client experiences and making the shopper associates lives easier, but it also brought us together as a team. And so the secret sauce is really like three parts of that. One was I explained to them what the priorities of the team were. And this is where we found out that that was really mm -hmm. key. Because people get into their day to day and as they're doing it, they're like, I don't know, why should I care about this? And I've already said in the back of my mind that this is impossible to do. Why should I take the time to reprioritize, to rethink about this and to really do it in a more creative manner, especially when I have all this other work that's on my plate? And what impact is it going to have? How do I weigh this against all the other opportunities? So coming together as an accountant saying, this is the vision and we want to make sure there's a consistent customer experience. We want to make sure that we're able to, like every time we do one of these solutions, we're helping that store associate and telling them the story of why this was important, help drive those solutions. And then second- That brings it to life for right? sure, yeah. It, it, was, it mm -hmm. was extremely helpful. And the second part of that was the relationships and building an environment of trust. So 
part of when you're siloed, one of the hard parts, in, at least that I was experiencing at the beginning of this, was people weren't as open to share because it was vulnerable. It was talking about what are some things that my department might need to work on? What are some things that I'm working on that uh, maybe aren't the priorities? And so people were like, am I aligned? Am I not aligned? So creating this environment of trust and open sharing really helped everyone to come and see each person in that team as a valuable member with an important perspective. We knew that we weren't missing anybody as we looked at the full chain. We could see the total impact and really view like what would it take to remove those barriers? And then third, this was my favorite part. We celebrated together. And so after that one, we just hosted a team happy hour, celebrated the teamwork and recognized even with a virtual team photo that really started to say, you're a part of something. Exactly. And break out of those silos for and break out of those comfort zones. Mm-hmm. And I bet the meetings aren't getting declined anymore, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely are. I'm hoping that people are looking forward to them and they're like, no, I've got to move everything else because we got this ASG meeting coming up. So at least exactly. that's what's happening. Oh, in my life. <laughs> and I love that that was the first one and that really set the tone for, for everything else. Yes. And on a bigger, um, on kind of on a bigger picture level, so as a senior executive in this industry and a, and a twig winning one, um, how have you come to prioritize relationship building and collaboration? And kind of what helped form that vision? That is a great question. So I love this question because it's very introspective and it can be answered in a couple different ways. So what formed my vision? Actually, I'm going to tell another short story here. Uh, before I came to Vesco, <laughs> that is key. It's just, yes, exactly. Before I came to Vesco, I was a consultant at Carney and I had an incredible manager. And one day, as he often did, he was giving me a feedback and development conversation. And he asked me a question I'd never heard before. He said, do you know you have a superpower? What? Mm-hmm. Like, I was definitely taken aback by that. And yeah, and I, I was like, I didn't know how to respond in any way, shape or form, because no one's ever said that before. And you're like, is this a trick question? What does he mean? <laughs> exactly. Right? Like, what, what, what is he getting at? Where is he going? No one at work has talked about superpowers before. Um, he probably planted the seed for the super group in that too. But yeah, yeah. he said, your superpower is building relationships. And he gave me examples, tangible examples. And most people give you examples of, here are the things you're doing wrong. He gave mm-hmm. me examples of, here are the things that you're doing right. And here's the impact that you've had at our clients. Here's the impact that you've had at really becoming one team with the people that you work with. And no one had ever spoken to me like that before. So, and you noticed. Person, yeah. Right, I did. And it's been years now. And I still remember this conversation vividly. So the impact that managers can have on, on not only that employee at that moment, but as they go into their future too in developing this. But it helped me to think, why are relationships important? Why is this a superpower? Like, is it not something that everyone's doing? How do I hone that? And how do I apply it to my day in and day out? So I'm going to answer your question in, in, in two ways. One, you said, what's the importance of relationships? So first, I think there's the client part of it and the value of relationships with the clients. So number one, before you deal with anything with clients, know that performance is the ticket. So you've got to get that right first. But the differentiator in my mind is relationships. And really helping under people, people to understand that you care about them. So we're a stronger team when we know what's important. Um, and when you're able to just really spend the time with teams, whether that be your stakeholders, but also the relationships that you build with others. So a lot of my relationships are with the store associates and spending time at 4 a.m. in the store with the people who are using our products to say, what makes your life easier? How can I help you? Um, and then with our company, the average relationship is over 20 years. So whenever you're dealing with long-term relationships, it, you need to have that foundation in order to succeed. So those are really the big things, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. And in this industry, there are people who've got longevity in the industry. So those relationships you have, it's so important to, to form them and to form them, like you said, at four in the morning, because those might be relationships you have for a while. And it was so interesting to see what happens while I'm normally sleeping in the morning in those stores with those yeah. store associates working very hard at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. That is great. And, and they yeah. probably appreciate that you notice them. You do. You do. And they're important. So when I go into the stores and I talk to, like, there may be the store managers, maybe there, the, the division contacts may be there, but I go to the store associate and I say, you're the most important one on this visit. Like, I care about what would make your life easier and how I can uncover pain points that you have and, and just help you to enjoy what you're doing even more. And the store associates tell me just stories of like, hey, if I didn't have to do this, I could spend more time with my shoppers. I could get home earlier to my family. And 
And so that's my job is how do I build a relationship with them so that we have trust, they're able to open up and tell me about those stories and tell me about what's happening with them. And that was actually one of the biggest ones I had for the year was around a store associate telling me this is a problem that I'm having because of those relationships. And then finding out that that could be applied across the board to everyone in the division. And what can we do to really solve that for them? So uh, it really sounds like you're sharing what, um, you know, what that um, what your your mentor, you know, at Carney shared with you and kind of paying that forward. That's it. I hadn't thought about it that way, but I think that's very true. It's very, it's that very whole concerned. ripple of, you know, the ripple of influence. And <laughs> Let's do that little stone and all the ripples that came out right. under it and after it. But and so awesome. hopefully this will be another way where people can, hopefully this starts another ripple through these conversations that we're having right now as well. No, absolutely. And, and people first. I think that's so, that's so important that you've shown. And one thing, and we've talked a little bit, technology is great and it's changing so many things in our industry. Um, but the importance of personal relationships, like the ones that you talked about, you, you really can't replace that with, you, you can, you know, technology amplifies and accelerates a lot of things. We hear about that all the time. But what advice would you give, especially to younger women in our industry who might be digital natives mm-hmm. about the power of relationships? That is a very relevant question for, especially this day and age, especially as we look at virtual life. So the way that I view technology is technology is a tool. It's neutral. It can weaken or it can strengthen relationships. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a watch out and there's also a way to leverage it to our, to your benefit. Um, And you have to use it intentionally. So as you look at the watch out side of it, I'd say, first of all, the watch out is technology drives efficiency. And when you're building relationships, it's not about efficiency. It's about connections. And so don't shortchange your relationship building by leaning on technology in ways that are going to uh, impact it negatively. So if it's just a quick chat message to someone, that's maybe not going to build the relationship or the rapport or the trust that you're hoping for. But on the other side, technology can increase the access that you have to people. One of the things that I noticed when we first came into the virtual world is I looked at everyone was like, why do we have to have virtual meetings? We have cameras on. And I was like, cameras give me a, a view into someone's home. Like, I feel like I've been welcomed into their <laughs> <Thank> home. <you. laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So, and so it's so true. And so I feel like, and even here now, when you're not using a filter or anything else, like you can see, this is my life. These are things oh, that are important to me, people, places I mm-hmm. travel, people I spend time with. And so when I saw things with clients or with other team members, it gave me an opportunity or you'd see like a Notre Dame hat in the back. You'd be like, Notre Dame, me too. So it gave you those instant connection points where you could start to develop those relationships. So there's some really great ways to use it. I'd say also with mentorship, as I'm talking, your your question was specifically around younger women. So mentorship and advocacy still just as important in this remote and virtual world, if not more so when you don't have that office and those office cooler or those door opens where you can just go in and, and knock on someone's door and talk to them. But the benefit of technology is you can get mentors from anywhere now. And so before you might have been like relegated to where's your office location or the people that are near you. Now it opens up the world where you can reach out to people that may be in a different country, that may be in a different state, that may be in a different office building location and say, will you mentor me? Will you take time with me? And you can have these virtual conversations with them. And so I think it opens a lot of doors, being able to stay in touch with people on LinkedIn and at other social media sites so you can see what's happening in their life and find out where you can add value to them as well. If they're talking about a sustainability initiative and you know that you've just finished reading a book and doing some research on it, it gives you that connection point to start reaching out. So again, there's some watch outs, but I think there's some really great ways that you can intentionally leverage technology to build even closer relationships. What a great point that it doesn't have to be the person in the office next door like it was, you know, when I was coming up when I was, you know, when I was young and in the industry. What a great, what a great point to make. That's great. And I bet you've got a lot of them. And you're also quite active in volunteer work. And so I think one of the times when we talked last month, you would just come back from a trip. So how has this kind of shaped your approach to building authentic relationships and your professional life? Huh. In many, many, many ways. I'd say the first one and the one that's most impactful, you talked about it kind of in the introduction, is while I was at Kearney, I took a three-month externship kind of sabbatical where I I worked and volunteered in Argentina and I worked with a nonprofit called Libertad Day and they, they help people with disabilities to get into the workforce and to just find opportunities. And so when I went to work with them, these ladies were amazing. I actually have them, they're up on my wall because they become like family to me. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah okay. They are absolutely amazing group of women. They, when I first came, they were quite skeptical and I had all these great ideas and I was like, 
I'm a consultant. I can help you. I, I work on strategy. I've done so many, I've done transformations for fortune 500 companies. Like this is what I could do. And they were like, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Sure. What I found is they didn't care what I knew until they knew I cared about their mission. They said, this is my baby. This is what's important to me. And, and all those other, the strategies you might talk about, how do I know that those are right for me and that you care about what's going to grow my business, but not only what's going to grow my business, what's going to make sure it maintains my culture, make sure it maintains my, my values and what I want for this company. So I was there for three months. Probably the first month of it was just me stepping back and saying, all right, I got to approach this differently. It's about relationships. It's about understanding the relationship they had with their clients, with the people that they supported, understanding my relationship with them. And that really shaped the way that I looked at every client relationship after that. So I'd say that was the, the biggest changing point for me in that. Um, and the second part of your question was really around how does that relate to work? So I'd say what makes my job rewarding and volunteering impactful is making a difference with people. It's not about corporations and how do, but it's about how do I make people's lives better? Whether it's at a volunteer organization, whether it's a store associate, whether it's the customer in the Albertson store, it's what can I do to make their life better, make their lives easier and make their smile a little brighter at the end of the day. So that's how it all ties together for me. Well, that really brings it full circle with people kind of across every component of your life. And I'm sure you learned something new on your most recent trip too, and had, had other experiences about, you know, connecting with people and building relationships that they in turn go back and, and bring to other people that they're working with. That is great. Well, so. this was a phenomenal so. conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Anything you're working on or excited about for, for this year coming up, Elizabeth? So many things that I'm excited about, most of them dealing with, and you're right, it is both that personal and professional. So making sure you're balancing both of those. Uh, you mentioned quite a few things about my recent travel. I was in Colombia recently, where this is my Colombian family up in the corner, huge, huge family of people who have adopted me, but it's really about building those relationships still with them, but also about with my client. And how do I bring my client into that Albertson Supergroup? So this year, the goal is really not just having Albertson Supergroup being an internal product, but really leveraging it with Albertsons corporately as well, so that we can really say, how are we one team, one dream, and working together towards that same goal? That's great. Let's get out of our silos, <laughs> get out of our comfort zones. Excellent. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, it was great to meet you in person. Great to see you again virtually, uh, you to your point about connecting you. again. Wonderful. And um, for more information on the Top Women in Grocery podcast, please visit progressivegrocer.com slash podcast. You can also subscribe to the series wherever you typically listen to podcasts, whether it's Apple, Google, or Spotify. And if you have an idea for a Twig uh, podcast topic, we want to hear from you. Feel free to email me at lptrack at ensembleiq.com. Uh, and see you next time. Thanks for joining us, Elizabeth. Thank you. And thanks for listening.